Philippine contemporary art is booming and we're here today at Provenance Art Gallery, one of the latest additions to the art scene. We're going to meet husband and wife team Raul and Joanna Francisco and learn about how they turn their passion into a business. Okay, well this is really exciting because it's my first time for me to be here and Raul, Joanna, congratulations. It's a very Thank beautiful you. space. Thank, Thank you. you. So tell me a little bit more about first you guys and why suddenly add something else to your plate. Raul and I, as you know, we have retail stores. We yes. have five retail stores, all um, homegrown local mm -hmm. concepts. So we decided that it would be natural that when people um, start with uh, appreciating luxurious things for themselves through clothes and bags that naturally the home would follow. Mm -hmm. And what best way to, to accessorize your home or make it your own and to have beautiful art. Although we started off with, as collectors 13 years ago and at some point last year I, I, I shared an idea with Joanna to do a gallery since we love art so much. We wanted to create a space with a global appeal. So the higher purpose was really to create a platform for Filipino contemporary artists to showcase their work at the global stage. It was a great opportunity and the managers of, of Shangri-La loved the idea and that, that's how it came, came, came to fruition. It's nice to do something that you love as a business yes. as well. So what's that process like? I think one thing that we always try to do with all our brands, including the gallery, including Provenance, is to create a clear DNA of what the gallery is about. Yes. And that should be our guiding path in how we select, uh, collaborate, and execute our shows. We are able to work with certain key artists that we really believe in, that we feel that they have great potential. Their skill, their vision, their concepts are in line with the, the DNA of the gallery. Now let's take a look at Provenance's current exhibit called Convergence. Currently we have on exhibit three very gifted and fantastic artists, mm -hmm. Betsy Westendorp, Cesar Caballero and Ramon Diaz. Yeah, these works are by uh, Miss Betsy Westendorp. I mean, she is a legend, right? Oh, yeah. super. I always, and she's so strong. She's actually known for this Atmosferia series as well, where she does clouds, sunrises and sunsets. The beauty of her work is that you can see the layers of color and what's interesting about it is that when you look at them at different intensities of light. And this is quite Ramon. This is Ramon Diaz. This is Ramon Diaz. I like this so much. I love, well he's known for his koi. You know yeah. and the thing is the thing is what's great about, about Ramon Diaz's koi is that if you look at it at the light, you can actually see the scales. Yes. They're actually so detailed. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah the texture and they actually the float out. Yeah, they do. It's quite three-dimensional. So this is Cesar Caballero. He's a Spanish gentleman and he works with layers. He's a very passionate guy, so he throws himself into each work. He says it's so hard for him to leave each painting that he does because he, he, he's the type of guy that just keeps on adding layers and a dot here and, you know, he's never content. I like how they both have a similar theme. This so that's the, that's the cohesiveness of this show. It's like, yeah, atmosphere and water and air. And that's why the name of the show is Convergence. And this is one of Joanna's favorite pieces called The Tempest. By Betsy Westendorf. It's fiery, you know, and it's, it's not one of her calmer no. paintings. The seasoned art collectors and now gallery owners give their advice to newbie art collectors who wish to take art acquisition to another level. Before investing, I think you should really, art is really to be experienced. It's never really, you know, I, I think a lot of people put too much attention and investment, although it is a real thing. But I think one thing that, I, that we do is that we really have to connect to the artwork. We buy with our hearts and with our eyes, not so much with our ears. Yeah. But at the same time, it, it's not a bad idea to look at the pedigree of the artist. You know, if he's a serious artist, if his, his goals are, are the longevity of his career, if he participates in, in, in well-documented art, art awards, 
this will tell you is sort of the, the, the direction of the artist. We're certainly not experts like you know in the art field like who, who worked in museums but people trust our taste people trust our, our vision that we've done our homework to look at the, the the path of the artist and so I guess that that would be more important I think it's it boils down to your husband and your aesthetic what, what you like what you gravitate to what you're attracted to I mean a lot of collectors it's very subjective mm -hmm. art is very subjective some people like those really shock value art and, and, and and they're so powerful that you don't want to show it to your kids. It's some like the more serene and more calming art. You know, well, so. it's nice to have a well-curated collection in your home. That will actually uh, make each piece... Yes, and, and reflect the story also. Yeah. You know, I think it, we were thinking about it like not every year, but to commemorate an occasion yeah. would be also a nice yes, reason yes, to buy yes, something, yes, yes. right? Well, thank you guys so much. Thank and you. I think, you know, our audience learned quite a bit.